I did a comparison video last week. I have this 2022 Yamaha Zuma 125cc and I also bought a Honda Trail 125. When I originally did it, I uh, had a lot of comments and more in-depth on the advantages of each. What I found out now after I have almost 1,300 miles on, I have over 1,300 miles on the Zuma, and last week I put over 100 miles on the Honda. The one thing that the Zuma has over the Honda is there's not a lot of available accessories, but you really don't need them. The only thing I've put on this was the Rotopack, which is a custom job and very easy to install without a whole lot of problems. The Zuma came with enough room to add a telephone and a Garmin uh, receiver that I could put on without having to add a special adaption like I did on the Honda. To find room on the Honda, I had to put a front rack on it and also had to put uh, a handlebar addition in between the two throttles. This allows me to put a uh, GoPro mount on the front of it and there's room here to store, I set up to three pounds. The one thing that I mentioned at the end of the video was, especially in this cold weather, the zoom is a lot easier to get on and off. You just step on it and also the zoom is there's no gears, you just pull the throttle and go. What I've noticed after putting that time on the uh, Honda is that the Zuma is a lot more responsive. It's nice having the gears on the Honda, but this, when you uh, hit it, it just goes. The other advantage, the big advantage, is the storage. The Honda has absolutely no storage, and this has a big storage under here. I can put extra clothes, first aid kit, tools, uh, sunscreen, uh, binoculars, a little saw, uh, tire repair kit. It has tons of storage. Whereas the only storage the Honda has, I added a little case in the back. But uh, this is a big advantage of the Zuma, is the storage. The Yamaha Zuma is more responsive on the highway. Being able to just turn that throttle and go is a big difference between having to shift gears and worry about whether you're neutral. The Honda is definitely an advantage up on the trails. Having it up over 100 miles on uh, fire roads and trails, it is a lot better balanced and more nimble and more responsive on trails. But it doesn't have the quick pickup that the Zuma has. And the Zuma is just so much easier to ride, especially today it's probably uh, around 40 degrees and the scooter with your legs inside is also much warmer to ride. Here's where I've noticed a big difference. I'm making a right hand turn here, going up a very steep hill. As you'll see, I stop here, so I don't have a head start. And this hill is a lot steeper than the shows on the video. And simply by just pressing the uh, accelerator and going without having to worry about shifting gears, it just takes off.
Now going back down this steep hill, the other uh, difference between the Zuma and the Honda is the Zuma has two handbrakes. The brake on the left controls both the front and back brake, and the brake on the right is just the front brake. So most of the time, all you need is your left hand brake, whereas the Honda has a right, a rear foot brake and the left hand brake. Now I'm heading out of town and going to come out into some farmland where you can see how well the Zuma does on some backcountry roads. It's just so responsive and so much fun to ride. Having both the Honda and the Yamaha, I think I'll really be a mix of which one I like better. As of now, just in my short experience with the uh, Honda, I think the Honda will definitely be my mountain trail bike with the Zuma. It's good for fire roads and plain dirt roads, but uh, I think the Zuma will be better for the highway. I'm riding in 40 degree weather and I had a uh, regular helmet but I bought a full face helmet which has been a real benefit riding in this cold weather. With the full face helmet and uh, double neck warmers and a down jacket with a windbreaker, I have not been cold at all. I've been riding down to 40 degrees and I thought it would drive me crazy but it has actually been very comfortable. I have bicycled these roads for many years and have lived in the area for over 40 years now and every time I ride bicycles or motorcycles I realize how lucky I, I am to live in a farming area. I live right on the Maryland border in south central Pennsylvania. There's lots of good areas to ride. There's farmland and uh, rural roads to the south and if I go north within about three miles I can be in the show state forest and ride up to 70 to 100 miles on dirt roads and barely have to touch paper. Great area to ride.
One thing I've noticed switching back between the Honda and the Yamaha and the difference in braking and the Honda having gears is I catch myself on the Zuma pushing my right foot down trying to brake but I also use the handbrake so it's nothing that I think is potentially dangerous but you do have to remember which machine you're on because they do have braking difference and I every now and then in the Zuma I'll catch myself trying to shift gears. Uh, overall they're both great machines and I'm having a lot of fun but you do get confused about which one you're on sometimes. Here I change my GoPro around to the back of the Zuma, give you a little better idea of how you sit up and uh, what it's like to ride it. There's definitely an advantage having your feet inside and being able to just sit and not have to worry about having your foot on foot pegs. But uh, it's not that big a difference and there wasn't that much of an adjustment when I went to the Honda. The Zuma is very responsive and a lot of fun on these uh, backcountry roads. Here you'll see as we go around some sharp curves, it just uh, leans over and takes them without any problem. And again, not having to shift gears makes it so much easier to ride. But then again, the mountains having the gears makes the uh, Honda so much more uh, worthy of climbing over rocks and logs. They both have distinct advantages. I do have to thank my wife for allowing me to purchase both the uh, Yamaha Zuma and the Honda Trail 125. She originally thought that she would like to ride one of them, but when I got the Zuma, which she uh, thought would be hers, she doesn't feel comfortable because all the weight is in the rear and she's only five foot tall. It said she just did not feel comfortable riding it when she stopped and was afraid it was going to fall over on her. So she thought she'd be, feel better with the Honda. She had the Honda first got married back in the 70s when she had one of the CT90s and she thought she'd feel comfortable with the Honda. She's only tried to ride it once and now at the age of 68 she's not sure if she feels comfortable shifting gears. 
So I guess it's a little devious, but I may have ended up with two different bikes for myself and used the uh, rationale that I was actually buying for my wife. But I can't complain because she's never complained about anything I bought and she's very happy that I'm happy with both machines. Here we're going up another steep hill, steeper than it again, and it shows on the video. And the Zuma handles it with uh, acceleration without any problem at all. This is probably about a uh, almost half a mile hill, and you wouldn't even know you're going uphill with the responsiveness of the Zuma. Here again, I'm always amazed at the area I live in. I'm going from rural farm country on some winding, narrow farm roads up towards the mountains that you can see in the distance. For those that are familiar with the uh, South Central Maryland area, up on that mountain is actually Camp David where our presidents come to relax. Uh, I live between uh, Hagerstown, Maryland and Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. and it's a very nice area because we're only about 60 miles from Washington, D.C. and about 60 miles from Baltimore, Maryland, but it is rural in nature. I don't know if you've noticed, but in all these uh, last few minutes of the video of my riding, what I like again about this area is I've barely passed a car. I hardly see any cars on these back roads. The main roads are busy like every place else. These back roads, you hardly ever see a car, so I feel a lot safer riding than I would on major highways. I lowered the volume on the video clip here because just making that left hand turn the wind was so much more intense when I changed directions it was really making a lot of noise. It's amazing how the wind can affect uh, riding both motorcycles and bicycles. It could have a real effect one way or the other.
This brings back memories. That farm I just went past on a motorcycle. I used to bicycle, and there used to be a dog that came out and chased me every time I went past. It was a good workout because I had to try to outrun the dog every time I biked down past there. I still bike, but I realize I'm getting old, so I am enjoying the motorcycle more and more all the time. This is a big uh, peach and apple area. There's lots of orchards, lots of fruit stands. Uh, during the season, there's lots of apple festivals, peach festivals. It's a really big uh, apple producing area and a great place to be when the seasons are in. This is another area uh, outlining the advantage of the Zuma. Now I'm on one of our major highways, so I only have to go a short distance, but with a matter of seconds, I have the uh, speedometer up to 55 mile an hour, and it can keep up with traffic. I don't like to go that fast, but it can do it without much problem. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm trying to outline some of the advantage of the Yamaha Zuma 2022 125 cc scooter. It is a great machine, but I also like my Honda. And in a future video, I plan on uh, riding the Honda and outlining the advantages of the Honda over the Zuma. Uh, the one video I did, I had lots of uh, replies and lots of comments. So hopefully, this will be a little bit more in depth advantages and disadvantages of both. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.